We are saying, yes, it is a curse, right? Jesus takes that curse onto himself. It's kind of like, imagine you're a mujahideen and you're fighting in the way of Allah and the one of the Kufa, they throw a grenade into your platoon and then you trip yourself on the grenade to save the other mujahideen. You didn't commit suicide, did you? You just, you sacrifice yourself to save everybody else. That's what Jesus did for all of us. Oh, we should worship um, um, Joseph. We should, we should, we should worship all of them in that same context, no? Right. So, so the 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 the, the issue is, that, and again, what what you what I'm trying to get you to see is, look, you've managed to quote something from scripture without actually understanding what you've quoted. Which is my bad. Yeah. Right. And 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 the reason what it's not just you, bro. It's, it's nearly all the Muslims in this park, nearly all of them, right? Is that you've absorbed a script that you've never bothered to check. So Jesus quotes a psalm in which it's where in which Yahweh says, And have I not said ye are gods and the sons of God? Well, that's a psalm. It's in 92, 93 or 94, I can't remember. It's one of the 90s, isn't it? Right? Uh, right? 86. 86. So let, let's actually... 82. So let's... I, I was off by about a, de a, a decimal uh, 10. So let's go Let's go to 86, right? And, and, and let me just... Let's just read it. Right? Right? So it, it's quoting Psalm 82. Right? God takes his stand in his own congregation. He judges in the midst of the rulers. How long will you judge unjustly and you show partiality to the wicked? Vindicate the weak and the fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and the destitute, rescue the weak and needy, deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. They do not know. Are you sure it was eight? Ah, here it is. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. And all of you are the sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you will die like men. So the point that scripture is making is that God gave all... That's Jesus included. He died like a man, did he not? Let me finish. Okay. So that psalm is saying that God gave his divine authority. The judges of Israel had shared in the divine authority. That authority that they stood on. They participated in God's divine authority and had the right to decide who lives and who dies and they abused it. So when Jesus quotes that in John chapter 10, he's using it as a polemic against the Jews. And he's using it to say to them, you've judged incorrectly because I have shown to you by my words and my deeds that I am God, but you have said that I'm a man accused me of blasphemy. And so he quotes this psalm because this psalm is talking about the judgment of the, the leaders of Israel who judge badly. And Jesus is speaking to the rulers of Israel who judge badly. But I'm saying, would that not, would that not include him when you say you will die like men? Because even according to you, yes. he died like yes. men. Yes, absolutely. I want to state very clearly to you and I want you to go away with this understanding. I believe that Jesus Christ died like a man. I do not believe that God died. So at that point he was God? No. You see, this is this is what you, this is the thing is that you guys don't understand what we say. Yeah, cause, cause, so don't, let me don't let me no wait one second, one second. Let me finish. So Christians believe in the incarnation, right? We believe that Christ took to Himself a humanity, and that humanity was united to His divinity in the loci, in the instantiation of the person of the Son. That I am, that personhood, that one who said, "I am the Son of the Father." Right? Takes to himself a humanity and experiences death in that humanity. Christians put it in their writings, in the Council of Ephesus, we do not say that God died. So when a Muslim says, but, but you're saying God died, it's not us that are wrong, you're wrong, because you're saying about us something we don't say about ourselves. So, so I'm a bit confused. So, so, I'm so, happy to try and clarify. So, so, so when Jesus was here, he was not God. Right. So when Jesus was here, he was God. So that means God died. No. What you're assuming, the, the mistake that I, I think you're making, it's the mistake that I hear Muslims make all the time, is that you're assuming that Christians believe that the divinity changed into humanity. 
that God changed into a human being, right? Get that idea out of your mind. If you can get that idea out of your mind, right, right, then then you will be in a much more educated place about what Christians believe. We don't believe the divinity changed. It can't change. God can't change. So divinity cannot change. So what happens is he creates a humanity and he unites himself and fills that humanity. So when he died, it's not that his divinity died. It's not that he stopped being divine. We don't believe that either. It's that the humanity he created, no, it was him. The humanity that he created, the humanity that he filled up like water into a jug, that jug was smashed, that humanity died because he created it and he filled it with himself. But it was, he died like a man. With what you're saying, I totally agree with that. I believe that God created Jesus. I believe that God imbued him with power. I believe that God made him, you know, rise people from the dead. He, he, he cured yeah. the sick. Yeah. But, but I believe in the way that Jesus said that he done it through the commission of God. Right, so, so let, me, let me be clear. I'm saying Jesus created his own body. And then Jesus filled his own body with his own person. That's what I'm saying. So I'm not saying that that some other God created the body of Jesus. I'm saying that Jesus himself created his own body and then filled his own body with his own person. That's what Christians are actually saying. That's what we believe. Would, would there be, you showed me a few evidences already, would there be textual evidence for that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll show you textual evidence. And I just want to say, Faisal, right? I'm Saeed. I'm I'm so sorry. Faisal was the last brother. I apologize. No, no, I'm Saeed. Right, right. I'm Saeed. I, I, I really appreciate the calm uh, and intelligent discourse we're having. Yeah, I, you, I wish I wish we, I could have this with every Muslim yeah. in the park. And I'm just saying I'm enjoying it. Yeah, same. same. Right? I'm enjoying it as well, bro. Okay. So let me show you in Hebrews where it says... So in, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17, it says, Therefore... He had to be made like his brethren in all things so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make appropriation for the sins of the people. So it's saying here in scripture that, that Christ, yes, of course, that Christ becomes like us in every way. Sorry, I will come, um, yeah. I see your hand. I'll take your question after with it. Yeah. So it, it, the Bible says that Jesus becomes like us in every way. Like I'll show you another passage. Right, and, and we'll maybe stop at two because I could show you more, but I feel two is probably fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the Gospel of John, in chapter one, right, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So we've identified a subject, the Word. Then it says down here, And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Now, the Word dwelt here, is the Greek equivalent of the word tabernacle. Tabernacle is a Jewish reference it's a, in the Old Testament. It's the idea that you live inside a tent. What happens when you live inside a tent is the tent surrounds you on all sides. You fill the tent, right? So it's using that imagery here where it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So it's saying that Christ created the humanity and entered into it, right? doesn't change his divinity, he doesn't stop being divine and his divinity is not changed into humanity. His divinity doesn't die, his divinity is not wit, his divinity is not hungry, his divinity is not picked up as a baby. His divinity, it's his humanity that has all of these things happen to it. And that's what we believe as Christians. My faith in Islam is still as strong as ever, with nothing um, against you. That's fine. But what I'd, what I'd like to say just before I go is, I'd like to take a Bible if you don't mind. Yeah, of course, if, happily if, if you. you don't mind. Yep, totally. And, and what I'd like to say is, well, I was going to make a point, I just forgot. Um, the last thing I want to say, I heard a rabbi say this, so not Muslim. Okay. I heard a rabbi say it's on YouTube if you want to say it. Is it Rabbi Tobias Singer? No, no, I know him, but it wasn't him that said right, it. Right, okay. You can, you can search this on YouTube. Yeah, go on. It's in the Bible, I think in the Old Testament. Yeah. He says, um, if a man is killed, hang him on a pole overnight so the people can see that he was a bad man and they may learn from it. Yeah. But before the night is done, make sure you take him down. Because a man hanging on a pole is a curse to God. 
Yes. So you believe in the crucifix and you have the cross. That very image, according to the Bible, is a curse to God. Yes. So now let me explain that, because that's a fair question. Last point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll take the Bible and yeah, of course. hopefully we'll meet again. So Christians yeah. do believe, right? Let, 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 let's just explain it very clearly. Right? God created you, didn't he? Yes. You owe God everything, right? Of course. Right? But now this is where we might part company, I don't know. But as a Christian, I believe that you haven't paid the debt that you owe to God. Right? You owe God one holy life because he created you. I don't believe that you or anyone else has ever paid that debt. So you're now in debt to God, right? But the debt, right, is not a monetary debt. It's in terms of a curse. The curse is death. So when Christ in his humanity dies on a cross, he is paying the debt that you owe. Sorry, my apologies. He's dealing with the curse that, that you, you are under, right? Because he takes that death onto himself. And as he takes that death onto himself, he conquers it. And because he conquers it, and because as Christians we are in Christ, we have eternal life, right? He, he, by living his own holy life, he pays the debt that you owe. And then he deals with the curse that you're under. So both the debt that you owe and the curse that you're under are dealt with in Christ's crucifixion. That's why, so we do, I am saying to you, we are, we are saying, yes, it is a curse, right? Jesus takes that curse onto himself. It's kind of like, imagine you're a mujahideen and you're fighting in the way of Allah and the one of the Kufa, they throw a grenade into your platoon and then you trip yourself on the grenade to save the other mujahideen. You didn't commit suicide, did you? You just, you sacrifice yourself to save everybody else. That's what Jesus did for all of us. He sacrificed but, but, himself yeah, to I, save I all of us. I understand what you're saying. That's your Bible, by the yes. way. Yes, thank you. But listen, it's been a fruitful discussion, I think. Yes. I think I've learned a few things that I didn't know. I hope maybe maybe you're, you're more learned than me, obviously, in Christianity. Maybe I'll just advise the same way I'm going to read your Bible, maybe read the Quran. Yeah, I've got one, bro. Yeah. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. I've got a Muslim Saudi Arabia who's like... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes. I, pray, I pray as Jesus prayed. Jesus fell out on the floor. I'll, I'll come to you momentarily. Can you just hold it? Over there. The Muslim was asking, uh, challenging Christianity about the incarnation. And I was pointing out that Muslims have exactly the same issues inside of Islam. And that the, 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 the reality is that the, the, the Muslims don't have problems to their own arguments. They argue, they argue that the infinite and the they argue that the infinite and the finite can't come together, and yet they can't explain how in their own religion the infinite and the finite come together in things like the Quran, or in the vision of Allah, or in Allah descending into the lowest heaven, you know, or in Allah being in heaven as the Quran states categorically that He is, you know, the, 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 and, and so they have these problems that they can't deal with. Right.